Welcome everybody. Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing, man? Everybody good? Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Yay! Give God a hand. He's good. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your faithfulness to us, Lord. Lord, we set this time aside specifically just to hear from you, make adjustments in us, Lord God, to bring to you our concerns, cast our cares on you, Lord God, and to hear your opinion, your views, your perspectives on the matters of our hearts, Lord God. No one here knows everybody's business, and we trust that you know our business, Lord God. You know the words that we need to hear. You know the answers that we, we, we require, Lord, the encouragement, whatever it is, Lord God. Minister, Lord, as you love to do for your children. Minister your word, your truth, your revelation, your will in a way that we can clearly see, understand, perceive it, Lord God, and then take it home and apply it in Jesus' name. We trust you, Lord God. Amen. Um, 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 2 Corinthians. It feels like 2 Corinthians. But I got Hebrews in my heart too, so, well, I got a lot of scripture in my heart right now. But let's go to 2 Corinthians. Uh, we're going to go to chapter 5. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It, it was Hebrews too. So anyways, we'll go, we'll go to um, first, Second Corinthians first. We'll start there, all right? All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Verse 14. For the love of Christ constrains us, uh, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, and because he did, that they which live should no longer, or henceforth, live unto themselves, or independent from God, but unto him, or because of him, or for him, towards him, which died for them, and rose again. Wherefore, or therefore, Henceforth, from now on, know we or we recognize no one after the flesh. Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, from now on, henceforth, we don't recognize him in those terms anymore, or know we him no more. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Say, I'm a new creature. Creature meaning created. All right? Um, old things are passed away. Behold... Next word, all things. Often, as in a born-again lifestyle, there's the old lifestyle, and we translate, transfer, or remove, if you will. We bring a lot of belongings, a lot of baggage, and we bring it into the born-again. And I don't want, we don't want to feel guilty about that because we don't know. I mean, it, when, usually when you're born, you have no idea what's going on. You just do what you do. Same thing when we're born again. We don't know everything, all the do's and the don'ts. And we don't see life like that. We just see it as being born, fresh new life. But there are certain things in the mind of God, if you can take it like this, that hinder your progress as a Christian. That hinder your, your progress as him trying to uh, mold you and I, if you will, into his image. So we act more like, uh, see more like, understand more like God. So God's effectiveness that we associate his ability to do whatever we actually are made in his image, so we have the ability to do whatever. But our ability to accomplish those things are hindered from some of the baggage that we drag from the old life into the new life. So it's not like we're trying to stop sinning or God's going to get mad. You're just not as effective when all the old baggage is in the way, hindering, if you will, your success, your progress, your hopes, your dreams, your, your forward motion, if you will, as a Christian. So I don't need... I, <clears throat> My intention is never to put more religion on you. Um, my primary function, I believe, uh, um, as a Bible teacher, is 
taking the practical applications from the scripture, making sense of them in a way where you can take it home and whatever it is you're working on, you can correct it. You can fix it. You can improve it. You can make it better. Whatever the situation is. So we have our, our ideas of how to do things and then God has his ideas of doing things. As a new creature, there are new views or perspectives that we have to adhere to or obtain or understand or accept as reality to, in, to change the old reality because we've been created new. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So learning them as much as we possibly can improves our quality of life, improves our ability to impress on, influence, over, make the adjustments necessary, first and foremost, say me first, and then various people that God brings into my life, or, or that I run into, if you will, right? So, <clears throat> wherefore, henceforth know we... No man after the flesh, this is verse 16. Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet from now on we know him any more, no more. Verse 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new or are become new. Verse 18, and all things are of, the new things are God. All right, so every effort, every, every um, design, every plan is designed in God, let's say God designed these things or made these things, created these things, installed these things, implemented these things, and then it gave them to us. We can't absorb all of them at once as we're growing. We, we, we go line upon line. We learn each lesson as we go along, and then we apply them. So after a while, we've got a lot of lessons. We've got a lot of changes, a lot of quality of life, a lot of progress. All right? Just growing up. That's all it is. So all things are of God. This is all God's intention. Who has reconciled us to himself through or by Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, the anointed one, God was able to reach through him, grab Thomas, and then bring Thomas to God. Follow? So, <clears throat> and has given to us the ministry, and I'll add this, the same ministry. The same way you and I look to Jesus Christ to access God is the same way God intended to put Jesus Christ in us so that other people can access God. Guys, follow? So, even though we may not always or all of us stand behind a pulpit or talk or teach or call yourself a pastor or apostle and all these titles we have in church <clears throat> even though we may not have what we would refer to as the traditional ministry we have been given a basic ministry every born again believer of reconciliation all right to reconcile to put things back together put pe bring people to jesus christ but i don't know if i can preach we're not talking about preaching just as jesus was the image that God used. The person, the human beings that God was able to reach through and touch everybody and anybody that was accept, accepting of, receptive to his will to, or to his, his message, if you will, his lifestyle. The same way God, through you, you guys understand, will reach other people. And you have to see it from that perspective that just as we depend completely on Jesus Christ because we didn't know anywhere else, through which we, anyone else, through which we would get to God. Some people may not know anywhere else to, through which to get to God except for through you. Oh, that just seemed like a lot, a lot of weight, brothers. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's no big deal. All things are of. In other words, you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to find anybody. God knows. Do you think God knows where everybody need, is, wherever they, wherever they are in life? He knows how to make you, or he knows how to adjust, if you will, our lifestyles or our lives so that we run into people right you, you can call it a coincidence if you like that's fine <laughs> all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit to this end to this this is the point this is what we're trying to accomplish that god was in christ like he's in you reconciling the world to himself not imputing or charging against them their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the same word of reconciliation. You guys follow that? So, God is reaching through Jesus to get me. And at the same time, God is through, reaching through me to get you. As, it, as God is reaching through you to get him, her, them, so on and so forth. All right? So, don't look at it as some like heavy responsibility. Everything is of God. In other words, he knows where they are. He knows how to make it so that your day just ends up, if you will, or coincidentally we ran into this person and so on and so forth. It's not, how do I, you don't even have to figure it out. 
You just live the life that you believe is the right life, and then God will work all the rest of it out. Amen? So there's no pressure, if you will. Verse 20. Now then, at this point, because of this, we are ambassadors or representatives of uh, representations or um, how do I say that? It would be like a, an official person. You guys know what an ambassador is, right? We send a person that represents our country to a different country. We call him an amb ambassador. And they live in an embassy or a property that's in a different country. And, they, and, and our nation's government sends that person um, uh, orders, instructions, directions, and uh, the will of our nation. And then they represent our country's interests in another country. So in the same way, even though we're in the world, we're ambassadors for kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of light. All right. Now we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in the place of Christ. Be ye reconciled to God, for he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, pay the sin price, who knew no, him, he didn't know any sin, that we might be made God's, the righteousness of God in him. All right? So on a practical level, what's, what, what do you mean by it? We're, we're in, as, as Christians? Just as God considered Jesus Christ righteous because Jesus Christ was willing to yield to what God was trying to do through him. Follow? So God trying to do through you that makes you righteous when you yield. So we don't have to figure out how to save every soul in the planet. All we have to do is live our lives because all things are of God. We're, trying, we're following his instructions as much as we understand that we're supposed to do. You know you're supposed to forgive, right? I always go to these basics. You know you're supposed to forgive. What else you know you're supposed to do as a Christian? You're supposed to go to church, all right? You're supposed to tithe, you're supposed to pray, you're supposed to mercy and gracious to people, so on and so forth. We you know, those are just basic, basic things. So, in other words, whatever you do know as a Christian that you're supposed to do, just do that. And let God work out all the bugs, all the other things that need to be worked out, so on and so forth. Go to uh, Hebrews chapter, I want to say two, but it's going to be five. We'll see. Hebrews chapter two. <laughs> Yeah. No, it is five. Ha ha. <laughs> Hebrews chapter five. This is one of those growing up scriptures. Very basic. It's basic truth to me anyways. So I see how you guys can oh, be receptive to it. Yeah. I used to struggle with that. I used to try to figure out what to say, what to do, and, and it, it became more work trying to do it than it was just to be me. It was easy, it's easier to, for you to be you than it is for you to be somebody else. It's just the way it is. Um, it goes both ways where I, I don't want to change you. That's God's job. And don't try to change me. That's God's job. I know who I'm supposed to be. You know who you're supposed to be. I'm better. I'm a better Thomas than I am a Rick. <laughs> See, I don't know how to be a Rick. I just don't know how to be me. But as our Heavenly Father watches each individual's lives, there are certain convictions that pour into our hearts from heaven, if you will, from the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. And then there are physical things that, uh, that help to um, support that conviction, um, like a confirmation, if you will, or various confirmations. We run into people who often say the same thing we were just thinking, stuff like that. Oh, I just saw this, that, and the other that helped to confirm what our hearts are already leaning towards. So that's how God adjusts us. When we don't respond to those adjustments, things get a little tough. Um... And as we don't respond to those a little tough, the toughness gets a little bit tougher. In other words, hardships are not because God's trying to spank you. In, it's just the further away you get from God, the further you, away you get from wisdom. Right? He's the source of wisdom. He's the source of being smart, if you will. He's the source of knowledge, understanding, conviction, the difference between right and wrong. We get that from him because he, can, he invented that line between right and wrong, light and dark, so on as to good and evil. So when he, once he separated the devil, once he separated all that, and when we find God in the beginning and he created all things good and saw all that he made was good, that, all, that was God's pure, unadulterated will. So when we showed up and everything was good, 
evil didn't uh, evil didn't enter the life of the human being until the human being agreed with the evil all right but in agreement with the evil because you can't serve no man can serve two masters according to jesus in matthew chapter 6 hate the one love the other or vice versa then by agreeing with God, we're hating or turning our back away or distancing from evil. By agreeing with the evil, we're distancing ourselves from God. All right? But let's say he is the source of all good. So disagreeing with God is disagreeing with good. Distancing if he's the source of all good. If we distance ourselves from God, we distance ourselves from from the good. So let's just, just look at it from that perspective. Oh, God just making it hard on me. God's not doing anything. We're the one that's walking away. Right? So if, if it's, it's like the, the story of the prodigal son. It got harder the further away he got from his father. The longer time he spent away from his father, which was the source of his joy, his happiness, his provision, his supply. And before you know it, he's, he's, he spent everything. It was all gone. It was, a, it was a great time for a little while, but he eventually ended up with the, with the pigs in the slop. And he was like, man, if I could just be a slave, I think I'd get more than this in my dad's house. So what happened to his life? It got better as he got closer to death. Right? So just look at it from that perspective. Don't think that God somehow is waiting around the corner just to catch you in something stupid. You know, it's like, ha, I caught you. That is the old mentality that you can't bring into the new mentality view and or perspective. Right? Always focusing on the guilt. All right. So remember what happens when the son comes back in the prodigal son story. What happened to the dad? Get out of here. You spent all your money, you loser. <laughs> no, he said, all right, he came back. Why? Because that was the source. So looking at it from the God's perspective, when we move away from him, we're moving away from the good, from the just, from the right, from the wise, from the knowledge, from the understanding, from the insight, from, from knowing the difference, if you will, right and wrong, making the right choice. Look at it from that perspective. The farther away a person gets from God, the farther away a person gets from life and more abundantly. All right? So. It's not that God's after you. It's just the devil's on the other side. <laughs> so we get away from good. Where are we going to? You guys follow? So it's only natural, right? That's just the way it is. If we leave uh, Desert Hot Springs, like say in the summertime, we start going towards Alaska, what happens to the weather? It gets cooler. <laughs> when we leave Alaska and start going towards Desert Hot Springs, what's happening? It gets hotter, right? God's making it hotter. No, just turn around and go back to Alaska. <laughs> just, just kidding, just kidding. But you guys understand, right? All right, verse 12. For when the time you ought to be teachers, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, after a certain while, you and I are supposed to grow, develop, become um, um, wiser, if you will, in our Christianity. Um, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle, say basics, of the oracles of God and are become as become such as have need of milk. In other words, you have to start all over again, back to square one, as it were, so to speak, and not of strong meats. For everyone that, ha that uses milk is unskillful in the word of what's right, in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. Now, according to um, 2 Corinthians, when we saw that um, we've been made God's righteousness in Christ Jesus. Think about the function. Look at it from the function, the purpose, the purpose, the purpose, purpose. For example, um, we're no longer in the age where we pound nails with shoes anymore, right? Or rocks or whatever we use. We actually have hammers nowadays. Praise the Lord. Amen. We advanced technology. Anyways, so the tool is used specifically for that. And when it's used at its max for that, it is the most perfect tool, if you will. It's in its perfect state. So when the human being is in cooperation with God to do whatever it is that God is uh, thinking about, don't think religiously, God wants me to go to Africa. Don't think about that. We all start where? Right where we're at. If it's a job that a person needs, if it's uh, increase or improvement in the quality of life that a person needs, some changes, maybe some emotional distress that needs to be removed so that you can put a smile on your face and start moving forward in life instead of giving up and caving in and quitting on life, which a lot of people do when they're discouraged. Right? So all those inner issues that are, that are hindering a person from progressing, from moving forward, the first thing God's going to work on is our hearts and in our minds, the weird ideas that we have that, that hinder our progress, that hinder our joy, our happiness, and the fulfillment that comes because all of that is part of good. All right? So um, <clears throat> hold your place there. I feel like we got to go back to Genesis chapter 1. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 1. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. 
I need to um, sow the seeds, sow the seeds, sow the seeds. I just remember, uh, um, I haven't seen him for a while. Um, but we talked, uh, this is probably about two years ago. Maybe it was last year, I can't remember. But <clears throat> he he wanted to talk with me and just some, um, a lot of people call it counseling. I just say we're just hanging out, talking and stuff. Just two guys hanging out, talking. And um, so I went to a coffee shop and after about an hour and a half, um, he, he told me, you know, I had no idea just sitting and talking would actually change everything. And I said, well, I'm not sitting here and just talking and changing everything. In my mind, somehow God is, so even though he's looking at my face, we're having coffee, and words are coming out of my mouth, and he hears, he hears my voice, it's actually God through me to him. You guys follow when it becomes normal and natural and usual for you, where, where, where you just understand that, you're in your perfection. <clears throat> the tool, if you will. Okay, I'll be a tool today as an example. When it's doing what God designed it to do, representing properly, um, the effects are immediate. What we talked about was the last two years of his life and his family, and it was all just shattered. And he said, it was just a wild gamble. I had no idea. I just figured I'll just say my piece and then we'll be done. And that was all in. This is what he was telling me at the end of the conversation, about an hour and a half-ish. And he said that um, it was done and the relationship was this, that, and the other, just trash. And... He was just doing because he felt like it, it, if he went to sleep, he felt like, okay, I tried it. I talked to God, and I talked to Thomas, and I'm, that's it. So I did my piece, what I'm, my obligation. And he would feel like he checked all the boxes off, and now he's going to go his merry way. And he told me, I just had no idea. I had no idea that after talking with you that everything changed. I said, we've been sitting in there. How do you know everything changed? He goes, everything changed. I was like, well, that's not me. I'm not that smart. <laughs> so it's amazing that God's words spoken through a person who understands that it's not me because I'm, I'm, I'm using me as an example. I'm not that smart, but I will yield. What I love about that concept of yielding is that anybody can do it. Whether you have education or don't have an education. Whether you have money or don't have money. Whether you have great credit or don't have credit. Whether you can speak English or not, you can yield. Submitting to the concept that God works through me to help somebody. Even if I don't think that help is... I have no idea what to tell this guy. I had a suspicion and he sort of gave me some hints about what was going on. But I, I, I don't even, okay, I'm going to go and pray and see what's happening. So I can't pray to tell God to work through me if he wants to work through me. He's going to work through me when I say, fine. Right? There's no special prayers. There's no special gifts. There's no special church attendance. It's just anybody can just yield to an instruction, to an influence. Um, um, uh, to, to a hope, if you will. Well, I hope it works. Let's try it. Right? So in Genesis chapter 1, <clears throat> we have a record of six days of creation, and the seventh day God rested. He goes, good, 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 constantly, constantly, and then he comes to the last verse, verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. This is Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So everything that God made is good, very good. Further away we get from God, the further away we, away we get from very good. If it's a mental distance, if it's an emotional distance, it's a, if it's a physical distance, I mean, obviously you can't get anywhere where, where God's not there. But often we can be, have a distance between us and God because of our heart's condition. Maybe we think something weird or strange or off or different, if you will, whatever, however you want to perceive it. But 
It could be a, um, an emotional distance where you feel like you haven't talked to God for a while. You don't really care. Right? So there's not a real relationship. Usually when you have a strong relationship with somebody, there's time that you spend with them. There's a quality that you have with them that you don't have with anyone else that has that type of a relationship. So your relationship with God, there should be evidence of it. So if you don't have a relationship with God, it, there's an emptiness that you, we all have as a result because we came from him. So the further away we, 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 we are from him, the further we are away from that good, that creativity, that knowledge, that understanding, that, self, that, that self-awareness, that satisfaction, that fulfillment, that sense of being, that sense of purpose, the sense of belonging, like you have value. All that comes from God. So when we distance ourselves, we lose that. That's why it feels empty. What happens when your tank of gas is empty in your car? You don't go anywhere. But what do you do as a result? What do you try to do? We try to resolve it by how? Go get gas. What happens when your heart is empty and you're distant from God? It's only natural. You try to resolve it. How? Filling it up with something. Like what? Who cares? You guys understand? If we don't know God and we don't find that, that relationship is what makes us feel full, feel full, filled, sense of justification for our existence, purpose, like I mean something to somebody in the universe, like he cares. It's natural to try to find other stuff and get busy to try to fill it up. It's just the way we are because we are designed to, if there's a problem, I got to fix it. But there's an old way from the old life of fixing. And then there's a new way in the new life of fixing. It's the, one of the most amazingest, amazingest things I've ever seen in my whole life. It's the weird, it's strange because it doesn't make sense to one part of me. But it makes perfect sense to another part of me. There's the flesh part of me, and then there's the spiritual part of me. There's the God part of me, there's the crazy part of me. The crazy part doesn't make any sense to me, but the God part of me makes perfect sense to me. My relationship with God, now that I understand it, connects me to the entire universe because the universe comes from him. You guys follow? I have a better relationship with the people and the things around me. They have a better relationship with me. It's like trying to acquire something or accomplish something that seems to run away as opposed to trying to accomplish it and it's easy. Think about it like this. When God um, created the rocks, they didn't exist before. But how did he create it? Through his words. Everything in this natural universe is, was created and it functioned and exists. It maintains its existence by those words. But since those words collectively mean good, right? In, inside of them is good. It stands to reason when that person, say God, through you speaks, only good will come out. So regardless of a person in a position, in a, in a, in a mental or emotional, financial, it doesn't matter what it is, condition in their life, wherever they are in life, High, low, everything in between. Far, close, everywhere in between. Deep, shallow, everywhere in between. Meaningful, meaningless, and everything in between. When those words start speaking, whatever is distance is brought near. Whatever is broken is restored, recovered. Whatever has been enslaved, lost, is found. Whatever is blind, it sees. What couldn't hear before can hear now. Even the rocks have an imprint inside of them of God's word, God's nature, God's knowledge, God's understanding. So that when I act like him, it has a better relationship with me. You guys follow? I'm not talking about the rocks. I'm talking about everything in the physical realm that God created came from this good person. So it has within it that imprint but since I was also made in the image of God, me and the things around me are compatible. So the further away I get from God, the further away I get from that compatibility. Follow? Life gets, it's supposed to get easier because it was designed to serve me. 
The things in this world were designed to, to, to yield, to cooperate with me. The physical body came from when God formed the man's body, human being's body out of, the, out of the earth, right? And the things that we use as resources come originally from the earth. So it's only natural that we are compatible. That when I seek gold, I should find it because we're compatible. When I seek increase, promotion, supply, provision, breakthrough, deliverance, all the things that come with my salvation package, benefit package that came with the cross, with the resurrection, all of that was bought and paid for in full. So there should not be any line or in any distance between me and the goodness that's in the world because it was designed to be compatible with me. Amen. It should feel really uncomfortable that things ain't working. And they do feel uncomfortable when things ain't working, right? It's not right. You... <sighs> yeah, John chapter 10. John, book of John chapter 10. <laughs> I've been accused of being a health and wealth preacher. And I would rather adhere to that than a sick and poor preacher. I don't preach poverty. I think it's under the curse. Um, I don't have time um, to deal with it, but in Genesis chapter 2, God told Adam, you can eat freely of every tree in the garden. Just leave this one alone. It wasn't because God was being stingy. Was that particular tree was the man's choice to be in cooperation. <clears throat> and we'll get to it in a little bit. It's in the, um, the Hebrews. But uh, verse... <sighs> Seven. Then said Jesus to them again. This is John chapter 10. The gospel of John. Chapter 10 verse 7. Then said Jesus to them again. Verily, verily, or assuredly I say to you. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves, the robbers. But the sheep, they didn't hear them. Or they, are, they weren't receptive to them. All they got were a bunch of religious rules of do's and don'ts. And when you apply religion, it doesn't work the way you expect it to work. And it's frustrating. Uh, trust me, I know. <clears throat> you probably experienced it too. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He'll go in, he'll go out and find pasture in alignment with, with, in connection or conjunction with what I just said. When you're the human being that God is working through, you act as a door. So when they hear what you, what you say, even in their wildest imaginations, I just could not imagine if I sat down with my 20 years of all these problems, I bring all this baggage, and within an hour and under two hours, you solve all these problems. It's not me, it's him. I'm just the door. It's not you, it's just, it's him. You're just the door. For a lot of people who are confused, and even if a lot of people have been raised in church, but they've been raised mostly in religious, traditional views and perspectives, they don't actually see God in, as a person. They just see him more of as a, as a book of rules, a, a whole bunch of do's and don'ts, legal, legalistic perspectives. They don't see a relationship. And, as, and when you try to apply a re, um, relationship w w where your heart is going towards God, but you're applying more of a religion, you're always going to fall flat on your face. You're never going to have that fulfillment. It's like hanging out with people don't want, that don't like you. <laughs> Why hang out with them? Go hang out with somebody who does like you, right? The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come. Who's the I right there? Say Jesus. That they might have life. That be me. You. I. We. Us. That we would have life. And that we might have it more abundantly. The kind of life that he's referring to. The word D-Z-O-E is the uh, Greek word. It means Zoe. The God kind of life. The, the, in, the, in the Bible when we go all the way to the Genesis. When God created life. That's the life he's describing. Pure, unadulterated, joy, fulfillment. The way he designed it to be. When things go wrong is because we're disconnecting from the source of the good. Right? If it's going wrong because we're disconnecting from right. If it's, it's going um, distress is because we're, going, we're distancing from the, the source of our joy or happiness. All right? That's all it is. <clears throat> I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In other words, he yields. Just like you and I. I'm not talking about pastors. Just using it, using this from the Second Corinthians, where he talks about that we're ambassadors, that I don't have to, I don't have to be concerned about all the answers and the deep uh, knowledge of the universe. All I have to do is what I know. That is it, and that simplifies it to where I'm yielding to God, and then God eventually is able to minister to whoever He needs to minister to, even though I don't know what the words to say, but He does, and I can relate to a person easy because I can relate to Him. 
two things that God said that Jesus Christ um, taught this young rich ruler. He said, how do I, um, what more do I need to do to enter into heaven? He said, love God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor. That was it, just those two. So we don't have to figure all that out. All, all, it's just our, when our relationship with God is, is good, it's, it, it defines our relationship with others. When we love God with all our heart, mind, and strength, that relationship in that love, if you will, connection with God filters my connection with you so that my relationship with you is improved because I can relate to the one who invented relationship. Amen. Follow? Just like a mechanic learns how to fix that particular car, that particular model, that particular make, that particular manufacturer, goes to that, their school, when you give him any car in that school, that knowledge, that understand, that training, then he understands how to fix everything and anything about it. But if God is the one who invented relationship, the first time a human being related to somebody else was when Adam woke up and there he was, God. So a relationship started with the manufacturer of relationships. So it only makes sense that when we develop our relationship with God, it makes it easier for me to relate to everybody else. You don't have to know all the answers to the universe. Just know him. Solves it all, right? Let's go back to Hebrews and we'll be, see how it works. See how it works. I feel like we're going to end up in Genesis again, but that's cool. It's all in the Bible. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I feel like somebody was just going. That's cool. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Um, we're at Hebrews chapter 5, right? Is that where we, we went? <laughs> Verse 13, everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. In terms of living life and success at life and progressing in life and doing well in life and moving up and doing things and accomplishing things, we don't usually look to babies as being able to do those things. We look at more adults to be able to do those things, right? So... When a Christian is in a level of babyhood, just brand new at certain things, they have no skills. And the devil knows it. And I believe, it. I'm convinced that is why the devil didn't approach Adam, but approached Eve. Because Adam was there longer, Eve was there less time. So out of the two, she was the younger one. Plus, Paul says this, it was the woman that was deceived, the man was not. <sighs> that is a power, one of the most powerful revelations I ever got about what happened in the garden. But anyways, <clears throat> verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is what? Unskillful. What's unskillful mean? Think about it. Just not good at it. I could be a Christian, just not good at it. <laughs> yeah, though I have a driver's license, I might not be a very good driver. <laughs> Some people, right? <laughs> they use the gas pedal more than the brake. But it's cool. It's all good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Word of righteousness is simple. It's a sim it's a simple term. It's just the right words, right? Think about it. Your success in life doesn't it depend on your relationships, whether it be personal or business? If you're trying to do a business, your ability to confer or to transfer your hopes, your dreams, to get cooperation from somebody else, it all boils down to the words that you say and how they receive them. So what if God invented everybody and he knew what everybody knew? He knew their conditions of their hearts. He knew what turned them on, turned them off, made them happy, made them sad, what they really needed, what they hated, what they loved. But instead of knowing all of that, I just know the one who knows all that. Would it not make sense that my ability to relate to anybody is improved as a result of my ability to relate to the one who invented relationships, who knows everybody. It makes sense, right? So looking at it from that perspective, wouldn't the most successful businessman be a Christian? It stands to reason, right? How about a person who could, uh, they say, counsel marriages, counsel families, talk to people, help them inc be encouraged and feel better. They should have some, if you will, connection with God in some way, shape, or form. Or, or, or somehow able to translate that relationship into the human condition so that when they translate information to the, to the human, words that are coming out are making a difference in that person's life. 
right? Watch. For everyone that is, uses milk is unskillful in the right words or the word of righteousness. For he's a, what if I said something wrong? No big deal. The blood of Jesus is also in the word of God, and that cleanses you from all unrighteousness. So, Father, forgive me, I blew it. I'll keep working at it, right? Because one of the things about skill means something you can practice. You may not, you start skill and it's terrible, right? You might start learning something, so like, I don't know what to do. After a day of training, after going through the process after a while, you practice, practice before you know it, you're the best basketball player, the best football player, the f best business person, the best whatever, because of practice. Amen. So verse 14, but strong meat belongs to them that are of or ma mature, even those who by reason of use have their senses um, exercised to discern both good and or the difference between the right and the wrong, the good and evil, all right? Simple. So see the term good and evil? Go back to Genesis chapter 2. According to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 and verse 14, how are you supposed to practice your ability to learn the difference between good and evil? Follow God's instruction, keep working it, working it, and your skills get better so that you don't need anybody to tell you the difference between right and wrong because you know the difference of right and wrong, right? Children learn that by parents instructing them, right? Parents would rather the children just follow the instructions. But every now and then a bell got to come out and you hear that jingling of the bell and everybody straightens out. Why don't you just straighten out because I told you. <laughs> if you're one of those parents that like, that like negotiation, negotiating with your children, uh, I don't agree with that. I just put it that way. Here's the negotiation. Do it or else. <laughs> not, not three times. Just once. Please. You know, if you do it only once, it's very quick. <laughs> if you do it 15 times, 20 times, a, a day goes by, a week goes by. One little thing is supposed to be accomplished taking a month. That's just crazy to me. Especially because God made the entire universe in a week. <sighs> you can clean your room right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. The dishes don't take that long. Anyways, I'm just not really. Uh, I was kidding, but I wasn't. Anyways, let's go to Genesis chapter 2 before I get in trouble. Verse 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So man was not created in the garden, right? <clears throat> we, since the garden is, it symbolizes the church, symbolizes the church because God planted it. And God, and the Lord God, so it's always God's perfect will that man is in church. There, how's that? Verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree, how many trees? Every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of Good and evil. Remember that term in Genesis and in Hebrews? Um, strong meat belongs to them who, who, by reason of exercise, have their senses to discern, developed and practiced to discern good and evil. That was in, Gen that was in Hebrews. This is all the way from the first time that a human being is supposed to be able to tell the difference between right and wrong. Right? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... You shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. So the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we find in Hebrews, how do you know the difference between right and wrong? Like if it's a dad training the child. The child is supposed to learn it by practice. How is practice? Dad says, don't touch the electric fence. Kids are like, yeah, okay, that's cool. I trust you, Pop. Goes and goes, and one day he gets this crazy idea. You know what? He is pretty old. He don't know what he's talking about. This is 2018. <laughs> Right, I could tie my own shoes. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> but he already knew, but it didn't. You understand? It's a lesson that we do learn from our mistakes. Thank God, those are. But we don't have to. Some people learn by instruction. Some people learn by observation. Some people touch the electric fence. All right. What God desires is that we learn because He told us, and we believe it. Why? Because we trust Him. We trust that he's not trying to hide anything from us. Remember that idea didn't come into uh, into the man's eye of views or per, not even any of their perfect imagination until the devil said, "Ah, eh, you're not going to die." Remember that he said that. God knows you're going to be just like him. Said in Gen in, in in Hebrews we find that practicing the instruction becomes knowledge. The difference between right and wrong. These. Uh, the temptation was to touch the fruit instead of practicing the instruction. You guys follow? 
So he eats the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat of it for in that day that death shall become or failure becomes part of life once you do it as opposed to uh, once you don't follow God's instruction. So go back to Hebrews. Praise the Lord. So God wasn't trying to hide a tree from them, right? God wanted them to learn it by following. It's kind of like cheating on the test versus just practice adding and mathing and whatever you got to do as far as school is concerned. Amen. <coughs> the, 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 pro, pro, the, the prodigal son, he decides he's going to go and do his own thing. In my mind, I'm thinking, just this looking at the story, and, and, and I learned it from that perspective. Where the kid, he's thinking he's all that, but not, not a single dime is his money. That, you know, it wasn't his business mind that made it. He got it from his dad. So he's living life high on the hog because of somebody else. And somehow, because of the, all the benefits, he decides it's all him. And he goes out, and he finds out quickly he's about as dumb as a doorknob. As a pig, anyway. <laughs> right? So he doesn't realize that until he touches the electric fence. But then he finally comes back and says, come on, son. I'll put the best robe, best ring, so on and so forth. He learned it by touching the fence. We don't have to. Verse 14, strong meat belongs to them who, that are of full age, even those who by reason of, say, practice. How are you practicing it? You know that <clears throat> being gracious, being merciful, forgiving, going to church, tithing, whatever it is that you know is God's word, God's will, God's plan. Practicing that without having to touch the electric fence. And as life gets better, don't let it pop your head wide open so you can't fit through the door. Right? Right? Just accept it that you're in cooperation with God, life gets better. I'm in cooperation with God, life gets better. I'm in not, I'm no longer in cooperation with God, life's going to get worse. That's all it is. That's all it is. We don't have to be thinking that there's some devils out there and, and God broke my leg so I would stop and pray. That's just, re, that's just crazy. Amen. <clears throat> Strong me belongs to them who are full of age, even, by, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to do what? Discern the difference. That's what good and evil means. Knowing the difference between right and wrong. For you and I to know the difference between right and wrong, what do we do? We practice what we know. That's it. Simple enough? Praise the Lord. Bow your heads if you.